All right, man, Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. It's a cock show. You know what it is. You know what it is. I'm back, baby. I'm back. I'm back. Look, so Kendrick Lamar has done an exclusive, exclusive interview with SZA. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, we're going to get into that. Well, I got into that. You know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. They over there. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, thank you for all the donations. Got some today. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you want to leave a donation, links on the screen. Cash at PayPal is in the description. They call me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000, a million by Monday morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate everybody for subscribing to the channel and sticking with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, Let me know where you're from, too. I really appreciate it. So let's get right to it, man. We're going to get to this interview. And this is right up my alley because uh, they talk about mental health. And I was in the mental health field for a little bit. And um, yeah, so we're going to uh, talk about that. All right, so let's get to it. <laughs> Lamar is now doing interviews as he sat down with Harper's Bazaar magazine. But obviously there has to be a little bit of a wrinkle with everything that Kendrick Lamar does. So this interview, even though it was for this magazine, it was done at the request of Kendrick by SZA. They get into... Okay. My question to this guy, and I know this is, this is not Chink Smooth, this is the other guy. Why does it have to be a wrinkle? You know what I'm saying? What does that even mean? Like, what are you trying to say? Like... My thing with Kendrick is he's very strategic and he knows what he's doing. And he wants to put his people on, which would be, to me, that's fascinating. And it's and it's actually phenomenal that he would put SZA in that spot to do the interview and ask him these questions. Now, whether people say it's biased or not, it's just questions. You know what I'm saying? But to me, it always seemed to be, sometimes, not all the time, but a good portion of people are comfortable with talking to people that they know about serious topics and let people in. Because if it's a stranger, even if it's a psych doctor, if it's a stranger, usually they have to pry to get stuff out. And sometimes it's too aggressive and it don't pan out the way, you know, it should pan out. Let's just say that. Well, let's keep it going. But th- to me, that, that's, that was just, that was uncalled for to say that. And I don't know how you can say that in a positive way. But let's go. Mental health and motivation. And Kendrick says his actions are not motivated by anger, but understands that love and war both deserve to be acknowledged. Not that they represent him, but he acknowledges that they both need to exist in the world. And of course, he would be asked about Drake. No, that's that's actually pretty true. Love and war has to exist because without war, there could be no love. Without no love, there could be no war. It has to be. There is a hierarchy in every facet of life. There's no way you can get around that. Whether it's war at the minimum or war at the maximum, it's always going to be war. Same thing with love. Whether it's love at the minimum or love at the maximum. I recommend a lot of people learn a a little bit about Greek mythology. You don't have to learn a lot about it, but just a little bit. But it explains a lot about what's going on today. Greek mythology is very deep and some things are outlandish, but some things kind of like parallel to what's going on today. Let's keep it going. And not like us. And he would give his definition of what it means to him. What's up, y'all? It's your man Talk with World Report for the Chick Smooth channel. We got to talk about this. SZA didn't waste any time. As soon as they sat down, she starts off saying, I want to ask you about your mental health. Do you feel like you suffer from mental illness or experience it ever? Or do you just feel like you're in a multitude of feelings and you're not putting a label on it? Kendrick would say, I grew up with that term. I was hearing it when I was five or six years old. So you identify with it, but not as it. Then he says, my whole thing is, it's all experience. I say some shit on a record and identify with a moment, and then I don't identify with it anymore. That was actually uh, that was a pretty good answer. He he kind of eluded the question, but that was still a good answer. Um, identifying with mental health sometimes. Well, then again, the answer he gave is actually pretty good because if you think about it, most people 
if they are going through some type of mental health, like mental illness, then a lot of times they can't recognize that they are going through it. It's, it seems normal to them. You know what I'm saying? But for some people, it's, uh, they can recognize it and they can handle it and they know that they're a little bit off. But mental illness could come in different forms. It doesn't just have to be what the normal thing where people would think that somebody's crazy. It could be more like tra- traumatic. It could be stuff like that that actually, you know, subverts you to doing something a little bit outlandish or crazy. You know what I mean? But most of our, I believe most of like, most of the mental illness that's going on in America is probably through, from what I'm seeing, it's probably through uh, misinformation and propaganda. You know what I'm saying? In narratives that's being fed to us from, and this is just, this just doesn't deal with, goes with politics. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about narratives that been fed to us since we were little, you know what I'm saying? Until we are to what we are today. So a lot of these misconceptions or narratives or even agendas that's being pushed on us when we were, when we were children, and you see it happening now where they kind of switch gears into something else. And now they're doing the same thing with these children, because the information that we are provided today, we can look it up and see that it it's, wasn't true. So they're trying to get you with emotions now because emotions, you can't really, how would I say, you can't really get around the emotion thing because you can tell somebody, especially these, these, these new age kids, you can tell them how they feel. And they might not even feel that way, but the way they present it to them is they can tell them how to feel. And then they'd be like, well, I do feel like that. Even if they don't feel like that, they tell them what, or they'll say, well, you feel like that, right? And they'll be like, I don't know. Like, yeah, you do, because you just explained this, and this, and this, and this. Be like, yeah, I guess I feel like that. See, you feel like that. So the narrative is being pushed. So mental health is, it morphed, in, it morphed into something different than it was when we were, when I, were grow, when I was growing up. So let's keep it going. It's just growth for me. All that shit is subjective. Then Scissor says, it's giving self-therapy. I say some shit on a record and identify with a moment, and then I don't identify with it anymore. That's just growth for me. All that shit is subjective. Then Scissor says, it's giving self-therapy, which Kendrick replies, I think it's going back to my inner child, right? I was trying to understand myself, trying to find people I could relate to, how to identify myself outside myself. It sounds crazy to a lot of people. I really can see myself out of my body. When I do that, I have no judgment towards it. It's too many eyes on me to not remove myself. That shit is scary. Okay, so I understand exactly what Kendrick is saying here. There's some people who experience things through uh, in third person. You know what I'm saying? And they look at things from a, from a lens that we we could never understand. And I'm thinking that that's what he's saying. It's certain it, people gotta understand. Kendrick Lamar is no, he's not a God. He's not a a deity. He's not nothing like that. But there are people who have uh, special abilities, not superpowers, but special abilities when it comes to certain things. It's kind of like artistic in a way. Some people can, there are people who can uh, remember what they call them, uh, sonographic memories. They can remember everything someone said. If you sit there and talk, they can remember everything you said for 30 minutes straight. They can repeat it back to you. There's some people that have photographic memories. These things are, are uh, I wouldn't say superpowers, but they, they make you, they make you a, a little bit different from people. Maybe that's what Kendrick is talking about when he say he has an, a kind of an out-of-body experience. He can see these things. Like when I used to write music, I used to and make beats. I used to give my my music a name it was like I felt like I was creating a, a life you know what I'm saying so I understand exactly what he's saying when he says that because I kind of experienced the same thing by removing myself from something to see it you know what I mean in a way so let's keep going to anybody else which scissor focuses on and asks are you scared and he would say no because I've learned that I can't identify with my performances on stage I can't hold my true whole identity 
to that person who's on stage. Because if I did, that means I would judge every movement, every time I mess up a lyric, every time I'm off key. It's too much to deal with. So I have to have a dip. Okay, so I right. now before I even let him go any further, because he's he's reading too fast, and I don't want to. Re I can't remember all of it at once. Um, so I get what he's saying in this part too. Kendrick is basically saying that who whoever's on the stage, that that guy on the stage is not him. That's a that is the musician part of him. That is the artist part of him. You know what I'm saying? And I know people are gonna they're gonna try to tear that up, but that's that's that is a hundred percent being honest. Not to say that he's being fake about it, but that's he's saying like, look, I can't I can't scrutinize everything that I do because it would drive me crazy. You know what I'm saying? But I understand what he mean by that. That he's saying that that guy on stage is the artist. That's the artist part of him. To that person who's on stage because if i did that means i would judge every movement every time i mess up a lyric every time i'm off key it's too much to deal with so i have to have a distance between the performer and the person i close my eyes and look at the ceiling with i had to develop that tough skin at like 16 or 17 years old not knowing it was not only for my career but for myself it's meant okay so now i understand so when he as when he was younger he he created this persona or not even created, but he removed himself from let's say the character, the character of the industry. He removed himself from that and he lived his life. This is why, and, and this explains a lot. This is why he's so, so secluded. This is why you don't really hear from him like that. You hear from the artist part. That's the part he wants you to hear. He wants you to hear that part of his life. He wants you to hear that. He don't necessarily want you to hear about his personal life because that's totally different. That's none of your business because you are a fan. What your business is that part of his life. You know what I'm saying? So I get exactly what he mean now, a hundred percent now. And when he said he had to do it by 16 and 17, that's when he, I guess that's when he started doing music, but I understand exactly what he mean. He, he let you in through his music, but not in his personal life. That's why you don't do many v interviews. That's why he don't do too many things that you would see him personally do. You don't, we don't really know too much about his life personally, unless you less through the music and that's how it should be. That's how it should be. That is, that is, that's a great answer. Really ill for sure. And then the conversation gets a little more spiritual as before asking about God, SZA asks, have you done ayahuasca? And Kendrick says, no, which she then replies to surprise saying, what? I wonder how you're arriving at all these conclusions. I want to talk to you about your spiritual practices. How many spiritual practices contribute to your day to day? And he says, all day, every day. She says, all day is several. Okay, so when she asked him about that, another clip that people are gonna probably take out of context is he suggested that Drake should get that. He didn't never, he never said he did it. He said, I suggest you you get that done. You know what I'm saying? Because I think he's looking at it from the point of view that Drake is much more damaged than him. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of y'all, a lot of people going to take that. Because see, the, the thing is, and I'm going to get my take on that at the end about it. About uh, I'm not going to really speak too much about everything. But I'm going to get my take on it. But th I believe that that's what he's basically, that's what people are going to probably point out. Uh, but let's keep it going. Talk to you about your spiritual practices. How many spiritual practices contribute to your day to day? And he says, all day, every day. She says, all day is ceremony. And Kendrick gets personal saying, ain't no BS, ain't no cliche, but I literally talk to God. Like it's to a point where I'll be starting to think I'm going crazy, but then he has to remind me, no, this is really me. Well, if that's true, and he does talk to God every day. How was Drake ever going to win a rap battle against God? Drake said. <laughs> Yo, that was hilarious. Ah, oh, man. All right. Cause, all right. So. For some people, they definitely talk. Uh, they definitely talk to a higher being. 
I'm not gonna deny that. That's just what people. That's what people do. Whether you whether you say it's in their head, whether they saying, but some people do. Some people is a balance for them. That's that's just what it is. <clears throat> some people are very spiritual, <clears throat> and when you, <clears throat> excuse me, and when you become spiritual, that's what happens. You do talk to uh, other, you know, deities or entities that come to you. That's just what it is because you're spiritual. You connect with the spirit. If you're not spiritual, you will never understand that. You know what I'm saying? You won't understand how people can talk to different things because they are spiritual people. You know what I'm saying? It's like me saying, I, I, I'm i talking to you about brain surgery and I never was a brain surgeon. You know what I'm saying? How can I talk to you about something like that? So again, how can you really talk to people about them talking to spirits if you don't practice that there there's people who practice stuff like that you know what i'm saying and again that's just what they do so but yeah that that's a good that was a good one how how could how could drake had won that battle if he had the power of god on the side right <laughs> that was hilarious mind me no this is really me well if that's true and he does talk to God every day. How was Drake ever going to win a rap battle against God? Drake said 20 versus one, but I guess he missed a very important person. But Kendrick will continue. My early morning practice is that I have to run. When I started running, that's where I started to understand. There was this threshold of pain in the spirituality for me. I remember my shins was aching and I was like, I got one mile to go. Then I get whispers and downloads and start talking about shit that I want to know about. And next thing, I'm three miles in, four miles in. I wake up and do it every day. She says, loss of self, you have to break yourself. And he replied, I have to. And then SZA would try to dig deeper into his internal creative and spiritual practices. As no, he says, uh, <clears throat> she says he lost herself. <laughs> Basically, in, when you're in the music industry, you got to understand that there's a lot that come with this a lot of stress there's a lot of people pulling you in different directions there's a lot of time when you don't have time to yourself kendrick is put he was put in a special place because he had i don't know if he had creative control of all his music but he had time to do what he thought was best you know what i'm saying whether top dog allowed it whether tde allowed it i don't know but he had time to think of these things so <clears throat> He's very aware of his surroundings. He's very sane. People might think that he's talking crazy, but he's really not. Because this is not this is a normal thing for a successful artist who's been through a lot. And he probably seen a lot in the industry that just made him sick to his stomach. And he's trying to avoid a lot of things. People gotta to understand too. <clears throat> when you're an artist, there's some things that probably rub you the wrong way, or you probably don't know how to handle it. But see, with him, silence is golden because he stays out of the limelight. He stays away from everybody. People will talk about Kendrick. They'll try to criticize him off a little, every little thing, but they can't really. It won't even stick because, number one, he's never around for it to stick. Number two, he holds himself at, a, at such a high standard that people, when they try to come at him and they try to say these things, it just doesn't stick because they look at it like, well, he says this, he's a hypocrite. He's a, he's this and that, he's and that. But if you go and listen to his music, he identifies with all these things because he says, I'm not perfect. Things happen. I'm not perfect. I never claim to be perfect. To me, I would take a person like that over a person who pretends to be something and pretends never to do nothing and pretends to do all this because you don't know their, you will know their true intentions. At least with him, you know his true intentions. You know what I'm saying? Or at least 99% of it. With the other guy, Doodle Ball, you don't know his intentions at all. Because he could be one way one day, and then next thing you know, he's another way. But, yeah, let's keep it going. He says, I'm grateful for the God T. Sidebar, what do you feel like your top three contributing factors to self-transformation in the last few years have been? And he says, the power of honesty and being honest with myself, perspective about the person sitting across from me, and learning that vulnerability is not a weakness. That last one. I just said that. I just said that. That's exactly what it is. Being honest. Even if you even if you are being a hypocrite. Because 
that doesn't mean if you're a hypocrite, that does not mean that you're not being honest. You can be a hypocrite and be honest. You could say you actually you can be a, 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 a um you can be very honest and be a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? You could say, hey, you could like something one day and then do something and then say, yeah, I did that. That's being honest. You know what I'm saying? You might say, oh, you, 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 you doing the same thing you telling anybody not, else not to do. But I told you I did it. Well, you're being a hypocrite. Yeah, I probably am, but, you know? So I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's what it is for some people sometimes. But let me run that back a little bit. Let's keep it going. He says, the power of honesty and being honest with myself, perspective about the person sitting across from me, and learning that vulnerability is not a weakness. That last one probably been one I'm still developing. To that, SZA will ask which one was the most difficult, and Kendrick will talk about his childhood and how there is no growth without vulnerability. He says the last one was most difficult. She says why? And he replies, we talk about our childhood. I hate going back to that. It's traumatizing. My pops, he was tough. He was militant. As far as every day, you are expected to go to work, take care of your family, get back up to do it all over again being a man type shit, right? And he never showed no weakness. He never showed any emotion that could garner a one up from the person sitting across from him. And I learned to experience that, not knowing I had them same traits, right? But for what I do, there is certainly no growth without vulnerability. If I understood the power of vulnerability earlier, I could have had more depth and more reach to the guys that was around me in the neighborhood coming up, you know? Okay, so how do I feel about vulnerability? I take his father's approach. I don't take, I wouldn't take Kendrick's approach on that. And the reason why I would take his father's approach is because, and I know this is going to sound kind of crazy, but it's the truth. A man should never show vulnerability. Never. Especially to his wife or his girlfriend. Never, ever, ever, under any circumstance, I don't think a man should show vulnerability. I think a man I know people are going to disagree, but that's how I feel. I think a man should cry alone. I think a man should never show his emotions or feelings unless, 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 unless it's something that garners for it. So, for example, if he's with his wife and his wife is going through something, yeah, of course you're going to show emotions and feelings towards her. Like, you, yeah. But I'm saying if, it, if, if something happened to you, and you alone? No. You don't no. I would never express that. Let's say if I if I um if I was married and I lost my job, I wouldn't tell my wife. I would find another job. She wouldn't even know I lost my job. Because her being hurt or her being uh vulnerable or uh or destroyed over something that I did would hurt me even more. So I, for me pr to protect her, I wouldn't, she wouldn't know anything when it comes to that. I would never express that to my wife. My wife is always going to be happy. Even if I have to be sad, that's just how it goes. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what it is. But as far as the vulnerability thing goes, I understand exactly where Kendra's coming from because he's saying, and maybe because I'm more of a loner, he has a lot of people surrounding him. So him saying that he would have to, he would be more vulnerable because he could have taught people around him because maybe they didn't know how to express their emotions and feelings and their vulnerability. And they took it out on people different ways. Maybe he's saying, okay, well, I could have helped them make it through what I know now. If I, if I had it back then, I could help them make it through, but see stuff like that. I would, I would, if I was scissor in this, in this conversation, I would have said to Kendrick, well, I understand what you're saying, but you can't, even if you're thinking about it, you can't dwell on something like that. Because when you start to say, I should have did this, that is a, that is a, uh, and I know people might disagree, but that is a, uh, uh, uh I'm going to say traumatic, uh, uh, a trauma. That's a trauma that you hold on to, that you need to let go. There's nothing you could have did about that. Only thing you can say is moving forward, this is what I would do. But looking backwards and saying, well, I wish I had did this and I wish I had did that. I just, me personally, I just don't suggest people do that. 
I'll just move, I'll just move past it. You know what I'm saying? But let's keep it going. Our parents, they never had these outlets. If I understood the power of vulnerability earlier, I could have had more depth and more reach to the guys that was around me in the neighborhood coming up. You know, our parents, they never had these outlets to express themselves the way they wanted to. I've always looked at us as somewhat of a beacon of hope for them. I've always wanted to know, how does your mom feel about your self-expression? He would ask SZA. SZA would give... So, when he say that he wished that his parents had some type of uh, uh, outlet like this. I'm thinking he's talking about social media and the industry and magazines and all this type of things that they could, I'm, I'm sure that he had that, but I think it was a little more difficult for people back in the day to express how they really felt than, than what they do now. See, now it's expressing how you feel is kind of like, it's kind of champion. Mental health, it's going to sound weird, but mental health now, people make money off of it. You know what I'm saying? They make money off of people's uh, traumatic experiences. And you got some people who make money off their own traumatic experiences. They'll get out there and they'll say, I'm an introvert. And the people are like, oh, yeah. And they love it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like I, I gave you an example, like like people like Billie Irish. Like she always, Billie Eilish or whatever her name is. She's always running around saying how she's this and she's that and she suffers from this and I'm suffering from depression. And it's like, are you really suffering from depression? Or are you just out here just using that component to make money off of? Or even looking for garner, you don't have to make money, just garner sympathy or anything like that. Are, are you doing that? Because a lot of people do that. They look for ways that they can get either money or sympathy. It's one of the money or sympathy or attention. Attention and sympathy goes hand in hand. And it's crazy because I totally believe that 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 uh that uh uh um, websites and um, how do I say this? Um, websites and and apps like Instagram, they were totally made for that. So, for example, like Instagram, Instagram basically is made off of you getting likes, people accepting you for who you are. So, even if you have some type of mental disorder, mental illness, or or even if you fake mental illness, you get likes, and. It makes me, let's say, for example, if somebody come on in and says, oh, I'm suffering from depression and you don't even take the time to even learn whether they are really suffering from depression, you just automatically double tap. And that builds up their self-esteem because a lot of these websites are just built for that. They built for making people feel better, even if it's wrong, even if you don't tell them or tell them that they're suffering from certain things because you can't do that. You can't say, well, you need to get yourself together because you'll look like you're being insensitive. And it's like, even if you know that this person grew up in a, a two family parent household, two car garage, white picket fence. And you asking yourself, why, how are you depressed? How are you going through these things? You know what I mean? You live in the suburbs. You got, you, you got a good, you got a good family. How are you depressed? You know what I'm saying? And then, They'll they'll come back at you like, well, I am, I am depressed because I just am, and it's like sometimes you can't get your way, so you're depressed. But that's what I believe that what he means by that when it comes to his parents ain't have those those outlets. They had to kind of deal with the eternal struggle of what's going on with them. You know what I'm saying? So let's go. The story about how her mom grew up and how SZA was able to give her mom freedom through her music. And Kendrick said, "You did give her freedom." And SZA says, and she gave it to me. But she would turn that right into, when was the last time you cried? When was the first time you cried? And Kendrick would say, I would say the last time I cried was probably on Mr. Morale on the Mother I Sober record. It was deep for me. SZA would ask. No. That, that record was actually, that's one of the best records of all time. I'm going to just put that out there. Um, that record definitely had a knot in my throat. My cousin called me crying. You know what I'm saying? Told me how uh, he understands exactly what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people I know, they actually cried off that record. That was something that I think people experience. There's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of inner city families experience stuff like that. A lot of inner city families experience uh, uh, incest and, and grape and all that stuff by their own own relatives. You know what I'm saying? There's people who 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 experience that through 
their own uh, grandfathers and, and, and rape, um, doing stuff to their the children and all this stuff. Yeah, that does happen. Trust me, I know. So I, I get it what he's saying that he, about that song. Now, him crying, um, I guess he's going to explain. Let's go. Did you say you've done more crying recently than you have in your life? He said, now? Yeah, I have to. She said, it's cleansing. And he replied, it might be easier for you, though. Which says the replies to, I cry all the time. I'm going to cry right now because that's just beautiful. Wait, you didn't tell me. What was the first time that you allowed it to happen? Which then Kendrick says, the first time I allowed it to happen is documented. Actually, on stage. In 2011, when Dre and Snoop and the whole West Coast was out. And they was like, this is the torch that we were handing off. Dre passed me the torch and a burst of energy just came out and I had to let it flow. My tears is all on the internet. And now I look back and I love that moment. I love that that happened because it showed me in real time expressing myself and seeing all the work that I put forth actually come to life in that moment. And for those of you who don't remember. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna say this. Kendrick Lamar is, he, he, he's too good for a lot of people. Like he's, he's, this isn't fair as far as him being an artist. This isn't fair. He's too, he's too good for a lot of people. Cause I, from what I'm noticing, how people react to certain things and I'm reading stuff online before I actually even did this, people were tearing this interview down, but not trying to understand it because people, people look at things from, they don't even try to understand the other person. They just, they just either, when they hear something they don't like, they totally dismiss everything else you said. Everything. So, um, as far as him crying, um, and he's saying it, some things are uncontrollable, no matter what you do. I don't care. How, and even, even though I said that you should never show that, sometimes you get overwhelmed, you can't help it. And it does come out. I, mean, I don't know if y'all seen that video with the guy. It was like, Yeah, he looked like he was overwhelmed. <laughs> so let's go. Here is that moment. Nigga, you got the torch, nigga. You better run with it. You better run with it, nigga, because it's yours. See, that's something that you can't, you can't, you can't help that. That right there is a million emotions hitting you at one time. He's, he is, <clears throat> you got a West Coast legend. I'm talking about certified legend. All the legends on stage, all the West Coast legends. You are just coming into music, like barely coming into music. And they give you the torch has to pass to basically saying everything that we have did led up to this moment and this is for you and you better run with it and take it to the end because we believe that you can be the greatest of all time any man put in a situation like that will break down crying because if you are in love with something as much as he is, he has the obligation now. Now he feels as though Kendrick Lamar feels like he has an obligation to be the greatest because these legends that came before him 20, 15, 5, 10 years before him gave him the torch. There was other people that could have gave the torch to, but they gave it to him. Gave it to him. Then after a couple more questions, she will get right into the real question that we all want to know. Can I ask you a hyper masculine question? You can also tell me to shut the F up. What does not like us mean to you? He would laugh and say, not like us? Not like us is the energy of who I am, the type of man I represent. Now, if you identify with the man that I represent, SZA will cut him off saying, break that man down for me. And Kendrick was saying, 
This man has morals. He has values. He believes in something. He stands on something. He's not pandering. He's a man who can recognize his mistakes and not be afraid to share the mistakes and can dig deep down into the fear-based ideologies or experiences to be able to express them without feeling like he's less of a man. If I Okay. All right. So let's break that down. So look, I'm going to tell you right now, when he, he used the word pandering, right? Now, everybody, no matter what he said, everybody that doesn't like Kendrick Lamar is going to focus on that one word because they're going to use that one word to say, he's look, you said you're not pandering, but you're getting all these awards from the Grammys. Look, you're doing the Super Bowl for white people. Look, you're doing this. Look, you're doing that. That's what they're going to say. Not knowing that they're working for him. He ain't working for them. They're working for him. It's on his terms. Everything's on his terms. This is what people are not understanding. Kendrick Lamar has everybody working for him on his terms. Even us. Even we are working on his terms. Because we wait for him to drop music. He don't drop music when he wants to. He makes whatever he wants. He ain't doing it for a certain audience. He's doing the Super Bowl. They're not controlling how he do it. He's going to do whatever he wants. He's winning awards because of the work he put in. He's not working for them. He's working for us. And he's where he's, he, he has, he, we're working for him. You know what I'm saying? They're working for him. That's what it is. So when he says that now, him saying that he stands on the man that he is and the morals and the values, that was what I was saying in the beginning. That's what it is with him. He is looked at as the moral man. And most people, even if they have some criticism of him, it doesn't stick because they know that at the end of the day, he's an upstanding guy. You can't really say, you could say whatever you want, but it's not going to stick. You could criticize people for certain things, but it ain't going to stick if they, if you know they're upstanding. You could criticize people for a whole bunch of stuff. But if you know that their track record is them being a good man or a good person, there's nothing you can say to them. Nothing. I'm thinking of not like us. I'm thinking of me and whoever identifies with that. SZA says, now, can I say something else in that realm? Or you want me to get away from that? Can I ask you something else? And hilariously, he asks, is it mean? She says, no, it's more like, I thought it was really interesting that there was any consensus at all that you might be an angry individual. For me, I don't find that any energy that comes from you comes from an angry place. And actually, the last hour and change pretty much solidifies that it's almost from a monk-like place. So when you feel the surge of energy in records like that, where is the root? Is it anger? And he will say, I don't believe I'm an angry person, but I do believe in love and war, and I believe they both need to exist. And my awareness of that allows me to react to things but not identify with them as who I am. Just allowing them to exist and allowing them to flow through me. That's what I believe. And since And that's why Drake could never win the battle. Because Drake don't understand. He don't understand the art of war. He don't. He don't understand it. I think that he thinks that things are so just black and white. You know what I'm saying? It's so... Uh, up and down left and right Kendrick Lamar is across he's uh up down left right across you know what I'm saying he's everything that you can think of in his mind he's moving at uh he's moving like Dr. Manhattan he's exist he's trying to exist in all spaces at at once you know what I'm saying Drake is more like uh he's a, he's a super villain but more like just a super villain he's like Loki you know what I'm saying? It's like, this is like Loki versus Dr. Manhattan. That's exactly what this battle is about to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, I'm thinking that what, what Kendrick is really saying here is when with love and war, there is, there's a certain threshold that you, that you have to get to, to um, consider yourself moving in a space of war and there's a certain threshold that you have to meet to get to the space of uh you consider yourself just full of love i think that when he warned drake 
I think he was basically saying to him, like, there is a threshold. I mean, he actually did say it to him. He said, don't talk about, don't talk about the family, oh, Crody. Get deep in the family because somebody's going to bleed in your family, Crody. So basically saying, like, there is a, a wall that you cannot pass, and I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to warn you, and I'm going to let you know. Because if you pass that wall, then it's going to be war. So even in even in this battle, there's there's still some type of love going on. You know what I'm saying? When you know we talking bars, but I could really put a stain on you that you can't get off of. And I think that that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? When he said that it needs to exist at the same time, I think he was more, I think he was more focused on it not existing, and him um, not the war part, not even coming into play if Drake would have played by the rules. The rules is no family. That's the rule. We could have kept this a friendly fade. Let's just keep it that way. You know what I'm saying? But Drake broke the rules. And when you break the rules, it goes from love to war. And now it's flipped on war. Now it's like, okay, now I'm going to do this to you. I don't really want to do it because I already expressed it to you that I don't like four times, but I don't want to do it, but let's do it. So SZA says, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead before I say something crazy. Do you think SZA did a great job when she's done doing music? Is being an interviewer or having a podcast something that you would want to see in her future? Let me know in the comment section. But her doing well here does not mean she would not have any backlash, as someone would say. So let me get this straight. SZA, who was on For All The Dogs twice, two times, and known Drake for 10 years personally, interviewing Dot, her former label mate, about the PDF trafficking song, and she just didn't know his sick-ass behavior the entire time? Do you agree? That's th this is a stupid comment. I don't even know why he even platformed this. This is a dumb comment. This is this whole this whole interview wasn't even nothing about all that. Like this is a dumb. This is a extremely deft tone stupid comment. This is a dumb comment. This is why I say like, I love freedom of speech, but some people they they shouldn't have a platform to talk. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna say that. But anyway. This is a dumb comment. This is stupid. Like, like, you just totally, again, I told y'all, people totally ignore, totally ignore. And I guess he looked for, I guess for, for I guess for more views or whatever. I don't think he was doing that. But just for a, a different perspective, I'm guessing he did that to put this up. But this is a, this is an egregious comment. This is stupid. And are you asking the question or is this question in the statement form? Because it doesn't make sense. You saying his sick behavior? What sick behavior? Where did he ever display anything sick? I don't understand this. You said sick behavior. Well, you said something because he cut it out. I guess it was effing behavior. Yeah, the whole time. Sick. But what sick behavior? Again, people... You know, I'll get into it at the end. Let's keep it going. Agree with this. What do you think about the situation? Do you think more artists should do written interviews? Let me know in the comment section. Peace. Yeah. So when people put out when people put out stuff like that, it just it just to me, it just lets me know that you you wasn't you was listening to it to find something that you can actually criticize. You're not listening to it with a uh, with an open mind. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem with a lot of people that I notice, especially fans. These these days fans are looking for drama. That's all they care about. They don't care about nothing else. They're only looking to find something wrong that they can complain about. They don't want to understand, they don't want to learn to understand. When you're talking to certain people, they overtalk you because they don't want to learn your perspective. They hate you. You know what I'm saying? They hate what you represent. They hate what you're talking about because they want to live in their narrative. They want to live in how they feel. They don't care about your perspective. Even if you explain it to them, they listen, they listen to compete and combat. They don't listen to learn and listen to respond. They only listen to compete and combat with you. That's it. So a lot of people who are going to listen to this interview or, or read this interview, they're looking for words that they can pull out so they can say, yeah, see, I knew he was like that. See, I knew it. But none of that's going to stick. 
Be, especially when you realize that you are a biased person. You know what I'm saying? See, you got to understand when, when it's dealing with, with, with mental health and stuff like that, you kind of got to, you kind of got to walk around it. You know what I'm saying? Or walk on eggshells or even try to understand why people are going through certain things. You can't shit on somebody trauma because you don't know what they went through. You know what I'm saying? Now there is certain things where you can actually, when you start to understand, you can say, well, you really ain't going through nothing. You know what I'm saying? You can start to understand that. I.e. back to the, to, to the point that I was making earlier about the person growing up. Cause you got people who, who appear to be, uh, let's say depressed or something may be wrong with them. They appear, appear that way because they might not get what they want. You know what I'm saying? Might not get the game they want. Then it's like, oh, they going through something. They've never really experienced real life trauma, real life experiences. It's just certain things, but there's certain levels to it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, even that, even with that being said, some people actually would do do self harm to themselves when they don't get what they want. And then you had to ask, there must be a deeper rooted issue with you if you were willing to hurt yourself over a video game or something like that. But anyway, so you got people out here who do stuff like this, like this comment that that comment, and they say stuff like, "Oh, you go, um, you telling me that she was on all for all the dogs twice? That means nothing." That means nothing because they are friends. You know what I'm saying? They're friends. So basically you're saying that you're basically saying that Kendrick shouldn't have had did nothing with SZA, even though he was the one that I believe found SZA and they're friends. So he shouldn't have did nothing with SZA because SZA was on Drake's album before the battle actually happened. See what I mean? Like people just look for things to just try to, uh, try to connect the dots because they want to connect that. And I could guarantee you that somebody questioned him about it. He's not even going to have a full bear to have a full conversation about it. He's going to be like, well, anyway, it don't matter. It don't matter. It don't, I don't care. So what? He's a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? So, but, um, that was a pretty good, a pretty fascinating interview. Um, I like that. I'm glad he put that out, but, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, man, show going to come out today. So, Y'all have yourself a good evening. See y'all in the morning, man. Thank y'all for watching. Appreciate y'all. <laughs>